11.3% of the population in America has diabetes. 1.4 million Americans are diagnosed with diabetes every year. The medical cost per year is $237 billion. Diabetes, it's everywhere. In fact, your voice guy. I live with diabetes. This is the Embrace Podcast. Diabetes is everywhere. It affects all age groups, all ethnicities, all walks of life. And on this show, we talk about diabetes awareness, current events and news, tips, advice, motivation. We'll speak with guest speakers. Welcome to the family. This is the Embrace Podcast. Here is your weekly cameo from my boy, the boy, the only boy, the goodest boy, Zipper, yes sir. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of the Embrace Podcast, man. This is episode two of this wonderful journey that we're going on and I am equipped with my Halloween mug if you're watching at home on YouTube, but if you're watching audially on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or whatever it may be, um, hello, welcome, good morning, good evening, good night. Um, I'm so excited to be joining you guys today, um, and I'm really passionate about this week's topic, and I'm really excited about this week's topic. Um, coffee break. Ah, delicious. Um, first off, I want to start off every single episode this way, and if you're not driving, I, listen, I always say that because I drive when I listen to podcasts, but if you're not driving... I want you to go ahead and grab your meter with me. We're going to test our blood sugar. Now, I'm not going to lie. A couple minutes ago, I checked my blood sugar, um, and it was 235. took four units, and I'm hoping to be a little bit lower. Let's see if the insulin is working. This is some ASMR, diabetes ASMR for those listening. Wait. There you go. A little Lancet check. A little Lancet um, reload. Blood is dialed in, and... Boom, let's see where we're at. Let's see where we're at. Oh, let me see who we are at. Boom! Oh, man. 230. So I've gone down five <laughs> points since my last check. But it's okay. Uh, where, where are you at? Let me know. Um, obviously, if your blood sugar is low, eat some carbs, drink some juice. And if it is high, hey, if it's low, remember we talked about last week, am I right? <laughs> Have some Ritz crackers, some cranberry juice. Um, do what you got to do to fix that. And if your blood sugar is high, like mine, take some insulin, drink some water, um, avoid coffee. <clears throat> um, but coffee does spike insulin a little bit. Uh, caffeine is known to raise blood sugars a little bit. So maybe that's why. I only had toast this morning for breakfast. I dosed for it. But I'm still running a little bit high, and that's thanks to the caffeine. But uh, nevertheless, I need it. Um, before we dive into today's topic, again, I'm excited about it. I can't wait for you guys to hear it. I want to, again, thank you guys for listening. This is episode two of the podcast. I said it already. But um, genuinely, I appreciate you guys. Um, last week, we had 15 listeners, which is a, a wonderful thing. It's beautiful. 15 of you guys tuned in uh, to hear what this dude had to say. So um, thank you. Um Thank you for joining another episode. Enough of the wish wash. I like. I want to uh, jump in to our very first segment of the show, community letters. Let's do it. Uh, I have some letters that I, I brought home from the storage unit um, that people have sent in when sending in supplies, and I wanted to take the time to share that with you, read that to you, and kind of uh, say thank you and publicly uh, appreciate those who took the time to write a handwritten letter. Um, um, beyond just the supplies they sent. So thank you so much. This one doesn't have a name, but it says, Hey, Embrace Foundation. Thank you so much for all you do. I'm so glad my diabetes supply is not being used. Now has a home. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And they sent a ton of supplies. Probably can't see that, but I'll um, throw it in the corner. But thank you so much, man. Um, the next one is from our um, a longtime supporter, longtime um, community um, member, Miss Jazzy from TikTok. It says, hey, Brandon, here are some extra supplies we had to help out to our 
type one community. Thank you for doing what you are doing. You are amazing. Love Jazzy with three A's. Thank you, Jazzy, if you're listening or you're watching. I appreciate you. She has been following us, supporting us on TikTok for over three years, man. So that is amazing. She sent us two huge boxes of supplies. So thank you for that as well. Um, last one is from a Paula S and a Jalen C. And it says, hello, I really hope these supplies will help many people. Jalen, my daughter, was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes on 6-3-2019. We have come a long way since then. She's very excited that she will be helping others by donating the supply she won't be using. Thank you for all you do, Paula and Jalen. Thank you so, 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 so much. Um, I hope that you are continuing to do well on your diabetic journey. 2019 seems like it was last year, but what that's coming up on four years now, almost five years ago. That's crazy. Uh, but I'm so proud of you for doing so good with your diabetes. And I appreciate you so early on to your journey, wanting to help out in the community and wanting to um, support and spread love to those um, who might need those supplies. So thank you. Thank you for thinking of others. And thank you for taking the time to write us a letter. Um, thank you so much. If you guys would like to send a letter, if you guys have extra supplies you'd like to donate, um, you can send it to the, this P.O. box right here. I'm going to throw it in the video. Uh, but it's 4980 South Alma School Road, PMB, which stands for Post Mailbox, 163, Chandler, Arizona, 85248. The next thing I want to talk about, this is, I just wanted to share this with you guys, okay? I really wanted to share this with you guys. I don't normally go to Trader Joe's, okay? It's not my, it's not my vibe. It's not my thing. I'm not a health nut. I should be. I want to be. I strive to be. I um, commend those who are. But I'm not a frequent Trader Joe's flyer. Now, my girlfriend of, wow, two years, almost three years, I think, two or three years, um, I went to her, I went with her to Trader Joe's. She loves going to Trader Joe's. She is a vegetarian, so she doesn't eat meat, so she gets all of her groceries and things from Trader Joe's. So I said, hey, let me come with you. She came with me to film um, the video that I'm going to be posting on Monday where we drop off supplies to people who are here locally in Arizona. So I went with her to grocery shop. We were together and um, I, I, let me browse. Let me see what Trader Joe's is about. I went to Trader Joe's a lot as a kid with my dad. I don't have the fondest memories because he likes to talk a lot. And if you're wondering where you where I got that from, it's from him. So he'd take me to Trader Joe's. He's a, he's a uh, health nut as well. And he would just go down the aisles, man, and explain in detail all this health. He'd bring out, he'd grab a, a, a loaf of bread and go into excruciating detail how healthy this bread is, how the raisins and the nuts will enrich my body. Nevertheless, he was eating it for himself. I didn't even get to have a slice of that bread. So he was hyping himself up through me. And we go through the, the loaves of bread. We go through the bagels. We go through the, the steaks and the just the, the, the vegetables, man. So I try to stay away from Trader Joe's. I had a lot of trauma over there. But I went there anyways. And man, oh man, I got these. I needed to put you all on, all right? I need to put y'all on. Go to Trader Joe's. This is the Trader Joe's mini beef tacos, gluten-free. Shout out Volunteer Dom, candy gluten. <laughs> I'm, I'm not laughing at you, bro. I'm just showing love, man. Uh, mini beef tacos, dude. These were freaking amazing. And I normally don't. I, I, I normally don't say this. It's very hard for me to say because I have a very um, solid place in my heart for Taco Bell. These tacos better than Taco Bell. I know, I know, I know. Crazy stuff. But these are amazing, man. Not sponsored, of course. We're not at that level yet, but these are great. These are actual size, too. They're mini. All right, they're mini. Let that focus a little bit. They're mini. They're good. Uh, and it comes with, like, a lot. It, it fed me, like, three times. Oh, my God. I can't. I can't hype them. I can't hype them up enough. And let me remind you, this is not diabetic related. This is just me, Brandon, a human being, telling you, another human being, to try these out. I'm not saying this is great for your diabetes. Um, it is 23 carbohydrates for four tacos, and there are six servings in there. So that's a lot of carbohydrates. So I'm not. It's, it's healthy. It might not be. It's it's carb heavy, just as all tacos are, but. I had it. It's amazing. I'm definitely going back. I'm going to get these probably all the time now, and I wanted to put you all on. I had to show you love. I don't want to gatekeep, but, yeah, that's my – That's my. Uh, I wanted to share that with you guys. and uh, Hopefully, you guys can try that out and let me know what you think, but I thought those were amazing. 
Um, but yeah, let's get into uh, this this week's topic. This week's topic came to me via TikTok Live. I was um, on TikTok Live last week, and we were talking about just anything. We were just kind of, you know, um, just having conversation. We were talking about diabetes and life and, you know, catching up and things like that. And I said, hey, do you guys have any questions before I head out? And someone said, hey, do you have any advice or tips for dealing with embarrassment? For deal, I'm in high school and I get embarrassed, she said. She said, I, I, I am newly diagnosed, yet I'm in high school. Um, you know, she's afraid of what her friends would think, as all people in this, as all people in high school do normally. We all care what people think in general, especially in high school, especially if you have diabetes. No one is that confident right out the gate in high school. We're all trying to figure out who we are, trying to wear what's cool. And we're trying to fit in. That's what high school is all about. We're trying to fit in. We're trying to be cool. <laughs> um, I had di- I got diagnosed with diabetes when I was seven. And I want to get into a story um, that really helped me embrace my diabetes right out the gate. And I, I'm telling you, I was a shy kid. Very, 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 very shy guy. I kept to myself. Little man. I was little. I was um, five foot two or something coming in as a freshman. I looked like an infant. So right off the gate, I was I wasn't looking for any any extra attention. But we got a letter in in the mail and it was saying, hey, um we noticed that you're going to this high school in the area. We are starting up a running club that will turn into cross country uh in the fall season. We'd love for you to join us. And my dad said, you're doing that. I'm like, oh dude, you you know we live in Vegas, right? You know these summers hit 110 degrees, right? So I don't care. You're not going to be a bum playing video games <laughs> every day. You got to go out and do something. So I, I was like, all right, I'll do it. I don't want to do it, but I'll do it. Um, my mom was like, yeah, do it, man. You make some good friends. A great way to start high school. So I was like, all right, you know, you know, I'll do it. Running is terrible. I hate it. But I did it for four years. Um, and my, my uh, first week, I joined cross country. It was great, by the way. Running was horrible. But it instantly made some friends. I grew out of my shell, um, made friends right off the bat. It was great. So if you're in high school, side note, join a sport, easy to make friends. Um, yeah, do it. Um, but I had a coach. His name was Mr. Atwell. Taught me a lot. He's one of those uh, coaches or teachers that you come across in life. One of those two or three or one coaches or teachers that really make an impact on your life. I could talk about this dude for an hour. Super interesting dude. He was a Marine uh, no, he was in the Air Force for um, a very long time as a pilot. Um, very interesting dude. Um, had a great, a lot of great quotes. I'm, I'm, I'm going on tangents again. But he also had di- he had type 2 diabetes. And, you know, my mom being my mom, she let uh, the coach know that I had diabetes. I was trying to keep it on the low. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> and she told him. And, I, again, this is my first week. So I was still a little shy, quiet, trying to figure things out, trying to – you know, fly under the radar. And my coach was very adamant about nicknames. You know, he was in the military, so everyone has, you know, their call signs or nicknames or whatever. And he was like, Brandon, stand up. I was like, you got to be kidding me, bro. Right now? Right now, right now? So I got up from like 20 dudes. And he was like, we're going to call you sugar because you're allergic to sugar. Extremely incorrect. But everyone started laughing immediately. I was like, oh, dude, this is rough, man. I can't take this. I need to go home, take a nice warm bath. And I don't know, maybe, I don't know, (laughs) but it was stressful. But I'm telling you, that little quick moment of embarrassment actually turned out to be one of the greatest things that happened to me in all of my, in my whole high school career, man, for four years straight, for better or worse, people called me sugar. (laughs) It was cool when the girls called me sugar. It was weird when the guys called me sugar. Nonetheless, everyone called me um, sugar. Um, and I had to, I had to take a lot of moments to explain to everyone that diabetes doesn't make you allergic to sugar. It just means you should, you know, take it in, <laughs> in what's the word I'm looking for? Take it in, um, non-abundance. Wow. There's a word I'm looking for, but I can't find it. But yeah. Um, so we, they called me sugar and I, that really helped me embrace my diabetes. I, I from then on. Uh, I wore my pump proudly. Uh, I made fun of myself. A little self-deprecating humor always helps. Um, and it, it kind of became the thing 
that I was known for. I had diabetes. I ha- it, it gave me a lot of opportunity to explain about it. It gave me a lot of respect. It gained me a lot of respect um, because I was a diabetic running in this heat um, in cross country. So all that to say, you never know what letting people know that you have diabetes can turn into. It can, what, what it, number one, what it'll turn into is a lot of people will respect you for it, admire you for it. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, um, you're thinking, I'm going to take this last off, but you're, you're, you're thinking, man, people are going to make fun of me. I'm going to get bullied for it. I'm going to get all this extra attention that I don't want, which is exactly where I was at. Um, but in turn, a lot of people are like, dude, you're doing diet. You're, you have diabetes and you're running. I couldn't do it, man. You get a lot of, oh, man, you take these shots all the time. Oh, man, I couldn't do it. Much respect. You get a lot of people who kind of like, you know, are, are, are proud of you, admire you, respect you. And not that you need those things. Everyone enjoys it. Let's not lie to ourselves. But it kind of lifts you up in a sense. This thing that you kind of hide away a little bit, you embrace it now. And that, in turn, helps you wear your pump proudly on your on your waistband. It, it, makes you, it, it helps you test your blood sugar at, at lunch. It, because everyone knows already who you're hiding it from. Everybody knows it, it helps you uh, take your injections on your leg, your your arm, or your stomach, wherever in public at, at school. Because it's people know already. You, um, it is what it is. Uh, There's a song a long time ago, uh, a song I loved in high school. It's talking about gossip, but it said if you cut out the middleman and tell everyone your stuff, no one can gossip about it because it's known information. So that's kind of where I think you should you should um, be at with your diabetes. Let people know. Don't say, hey, I have diabetes, everybody. But just wear it. Be about it. T- inject. Test your blood sugar. Wear your pump proudly because um, if people know, no one's going to make fun of you about it because it's no information. What are you going to make fun of a, someone who has diabetes? Yeah, we all know it, buddy. I got to do it to live. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I can't not inject in front of you because you might think it's weird or you're not used to it or, you know, whatever. But it, 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 it is what it is. Cut out the middleman. Um and you know, people will admire you for it. Will be will um, respect you for it, man. It's 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 a great thing. You know, you should embrace it. Um, it isn't easy living with diabetes. We all know that it isn't easy. It's a day to day thing. It's an hour to hour thing. It's a minute to minute thing. It's an everyday constant thing in the back of your head um, that you are living with. You're battling with. So why care about or worry about the people who are who might? judge you for it you know you gotta think optimistically man these people won't judge me for it. they're gonna be they're gonna you know they're gonna think it's cool they're gonna admire it or even better yet who cares what they think man most of the time you might you might someone might bat an eye for a few seconds someone god forbid might point but in a, a minute's time two minutes time we're both gonna forget about it who cares nobody really cares you know what i'm saying and that's freeing another quote i saw is if you're so worried of judgment, you are just those, you're just other people's prisoner. Be free. Embrace it. That's the number one. That's why I called it embrace in the first place. Whoa, that <laughs> rhymed a little bit. Um, but yeah, man, rock it. It's, it's something to be proud of. It isn't easy. So, you know, be proud of it. People have tattoos of um, their diabetes, they have type 1 diabetic on their chest, man. It's cool. I respect those people, man. So be proud of it. Don't think too much on what other people uh, think, man. Don't worry about being judged. Um, embrace it. Rock it. Live with it. Love it. You have to live with it. So might as well embrace it. You know what I'm saying? What's worse? Wearing it, embracing it, rocking it, um, cutting out the middleman, or just uh, being scared of being judged, hiding, um, you know, hiding or not injecting in public or not testing in public. You're You're deteriorating your health. You're not being who you are, you're not being true to yourself, you're not taking care of yourself if you are not testing or not injecting um, because someone might look. That's crazy. Do you hear that? That is crazy. You are not injecting, you are not testing um, because of someone else who doesn't have diabetes. They they, they don't understand. And again, I'm not someone who's just sitting on here, of course, you know, that I I haven't been um, embracing it my whole life. Like I said, I was shy about it. I was self-conscious about it um for a good part of my middle school years and early early high school 
Um, I would inject and I would test in the bathroom. Sometimes I would eat in the bathroom just to avoid it altogether. So this is not coming from someone who was right out the gate. I've always embraced it. I've always been so on top of it. I've been always been so like not caring. I, I still care what people think. Everyone does. Let's not, let's not um pretend here we all we all care to some degree what people think like how people think of us and how people perceive us you know what i'm saying um so i'm not i'm not i'm not coming from a place of judgment either i'm coming from a place who was in your same shoes especially those people in high school or in middle school who are newly diagnosed this is new uh these things are new high school is new these people that you don't know new um, could be intimidating. You might be a freshman with these giant seniors and you want to come out the gate injecting already, you know, putting yourself out there. I get it. I totally, I totally, I totally get it. But I want you to work on it. That's my one challenge for you this week. At least work on it. Do something diabetic related that scares you just a little bit. Maybe, I mean, if you're not ready for it, don't inject in front of people right off the bat. It could be scary. I get it. Go go to the bathroom inject. Go Go do it. Um, where no one can see you. Totally. Take baby steps. I'm all for that. But when you're in your when you're with your group of friends, hey, maybe take out your meter. Maybe, maybe not just maybe not throw it on the table. Maybe just put it on your leg and, and test your blood sugar. And then the next day, put it on the table. And then the next day, bring it up a little bit. Oh, cool, I'm 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 160. You know, it's gonna bring one person's gonna ask about it. Like, whoa, what dude, what do you do? What is that? Oh, I have diabetes, man. I gotta test myself before I eat. Oh, okay, that's pretty cool. And then before you know it, you're you're Slamming your tester on the ta- lunch table, you're injecting, and it's all good. But take baby steps. It's my one challenge. Do something this week that scares you a little bit with your diabetes. I'm not saying something like don't test or something like that, or don't inject because that's that's obviously scary. But do something. Put yourself out there just a little bit uh, this week. For me, at least, I'm challenging you. Um, and if you're listening, please, 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 please take that challenge. Um, Diabetes in all aspects isn't easy, and this is another facet of diabetes that isn't easy. It's, uh, no one really talks about the embarrass, embarrassing feelings or the uncomfortable feelings um, or maybe even the ashamed feelings, which might need a whole another episode itself um, of diabetes. But know that it's not your fault, right? It's, you didn't ask for diabetes. You're just dealing with it. You're handling it every single day. Um, no one knows these, these behind-the-curtains battles that you face every single day. Um, you know, it isn't easy. And this is just another thing you have to put on your plate with diabetes. I get it. Um, but like I said, embrace it. You know, we're all doing our best out here. Um, and this might sound harsh, but again, I'm going to reiterate this fact. Nobody cares, right? They might, might have something dumb to say about it. They might have something, they might have a question. They might be curious, but at the end of the day, Every single person, whether it be high school or your job, you could be 40, you could be 50. Everyone is just thinking the same thing that you are. What is everyone thinking about me right now? So that's kind of comforting. Everybody is thinking, oh, what's what's this person thinking about my new hat? Oh, man, what's Sally thinking of this new shirt that I wear? <laughs> what's Johnny thinking of this new perfume that I put on? Everyone is in their own head, especially in high school, thinking of what the person across from them is thinking. All right. So in that comfortability, just test your blood sugar. Inject in front of everyone. Let people know um, what's going on, man. And um, I promise you, you're going to feel better about it. It's going to be so much more freeing. You're going to be able to put your chest out there. Your shoulders are going to be back. You're going to feel good about it, man. Like, oh, man, I have diabetes, but... It's all good. It's going to help you in the long run. And, and um, you know what I'm saying? Um, so I know. Ch- and also, I, I encourage you guys to challenge yourselves. Go try a sport. Go do something. Um, be somebody that inspires another person to uh, that has diabetes to, to, to prove to them that they can embrace it. They can do these things without diabetes. Go join uh, the swim team. Go join the wrestling team. Go join uh, the basketball team. And people say, oh, my gosh, you do basketball. And you have diabetes? Man, I wanted to do basketball. I thought I couldn't do it. But now that I see this guy doing it, and he has diabetes too, why can't I do it? You know what I'm saying? Be that, be that somebody for somebody. Um, and another thing, too, this this is rare because, I mean, in high school, I didn't, I didn't know or see any other diabetics, maybe because they were all hiding like I was uh, in the beginning. But you never know. What if, what if someone else at that table 
sees you testing your blood sugar, who also has diabetes, that encourages them to do it. And it's a beautiful thing. And then you found yourself a diet buddy. You just never know. I am so confident in telling you that the uh, pros way outweigh the cons of embracing it and, and, and trying your best to not feel those feelings of embarrassment uh, and feeling confident with your diabetes. Like I said, I know I repeat myself a lot, so forgive me for that. Um, but you live with it anyways. You have it anyways. You might as well rock it. You know what I'm saying? You might as well embrace it. You might as well put it on your sleeve, man. People will respect you for it. People will admire you for it. And um, it's just another thing that makes you unique. Um, everybody, everyone's trying to stand out. Um, everybody, um, you know, well, I'm going to say everyone's trying to stand out, but everybody is unique in your own way. And diabetes is one of those things that make you unique. It makes you who you are. I know it sounds corny, but it is, man. It makes you who you are. It's, it's, it's part of the wonderful things that make you you. Maybe you like art. Maybe you like, you know, you're, maybe you're, you have a very vast, um, what do you call it? Very vast taste in music. Maybe you like fashion, but you also have diabetes and you also uh, love dog. You know, it, it just makes you, it's a palette of who you are and it's beautiful. And, and that's what it, um, that's what it is, man. Um, I know this episode was, was geared mostly towards students in high school and in middle school, um, but it goes for everybody. You could be 30 and still, you know, thinking what someone else might think. You, you might be 30 and still feeling embarrassed to inject or to dose or to bring your pump out or to test. Um, I know I still have those feelings sometimes. I, and, and to me, mostly, it's usually around if kids are around. I don't want them to see me injecting and, and get scared or like, you know what I'm saying? I, I, you know, sometimes like, I don't, I don't know. It kind of feels weird if I inject right now in the middle of this concert. But, <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's like, oh, who cares, bro? And then you just do it. You know, if you, um, if you cut out that little voice in your head instantly, it's so much easier. If you just like, the more you have that back and forth in your head, the more, um, the more you're li more, more likely not going to do it. You know what I'm saying? So if you, if you start all, I'm going to challenge you with this too. If you start to, uh, if you stop those gears from going, um, it's way more easier. If you're like, oh, I don't know if I should do it. You cut that out right away. You go, I'm just going to do it. Boom. It's over. It's done. It's, it, it, it's just easier that way. You know what I'm saying? Um, but that's all I have to say about that. But I did reach out to people in the community um, and ask them. I went on my Instagram, threw out a question, said, hey, I'm filming this podcast tomorrow. Um, do you guys have any tips, advice, stories, anything on the matter of embracing diabetes, feelings of uncomfortability uh, and embarrassment. So if you are on the fence right now, you're like, oh, I still don't know. Brandon's not the best at persuading and he's not, I, I'm not convinced yet. Don't take it from me. Don't take it from me. I don't have all the answers. I, I don't know everything. So let's, let's read some things from the community. This one, this first one comes from a um, Miss Hazel. This is Hazel draws the line on Instagram and she says, I remember telling myself, which one is worse? Them seeing me test and take insulin or them seeing me pass out? Facts. That's true. So that helped me suck it up and get over myself. Sometimes we got to get over ourselves. Plus, in reality, nobody really cared. That's what I'm saying. They might look, but that goes away after two seconds and that's all. So true. Um, live by that, man. That's true. Some three core things that she said that are so important. One. What's worse, them seeing me test and take insulin or them seeing me pass out? Come on now. Two, um, nobody really cares. They might look, but they, that, that look goes away after two seconds. And three, it helps you suck it up and get over yourself. You know what I'm saying? That's so true. Let's, let's, let's read a couple more um, from the community. Let's see what else we got. This one comes from... This one comes from Noel one wait Noel L one two three. She says, "Staring because they have no idea what I'm doing. I try to take it." Oh, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Reverse. She says, "I used to be embarrassed, but then I see it as a learning moment. Maybe they are staring because they have no idea what I'm doing. I try to take it. I try to take it as a learning moment." Boom. That's what I'm talking about. So true. Take it as an opportunity to teach, to spread awareness about diabetes. Again, we might not, you might not be there yet, but that is another reason. That's another um, thing to put in your head that like, ah, it's embarrassing for me, but it's a great way 
to spread awareness, to teach about diabetes, and maybe uh, debunk some of the um, the generalities or the ignorances of, that people have of diabetes. Oh, do you have that because you ate too much? No, actually, I have it because you know I just got it one day, random. Um, you know, you know what I'm saying. So it, 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 take it as a learning moment. That's a great piece of advice. This one comes from "Ain't No Future in It" from Instagram. It says, "Don't let your numbers control you. You control them. We do live a normal life. Just more care. What's what's a good average number? I freak if my number is above 115. So that's 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 a great one. Don't let your numbers control you. You control them." We live a normal life, just more care. So true. We're just, we're equal to every single person that you see. All man or woman or other is created equal. Same goes in high school. Same goes in middle school. Same goes at your job or at your work or wherever. You live a normal life, just like everyone else. Everyone else has their own struggles, uh, their own things that they're stressed about, their own things. Like I was saying, that they're self-conscious about. We're all the same, man. We're all in the same boat. We all live a normal life. We just happen to have to take a little bit more care. We might, we just happen to have to look at the back of um, the box for nutrition facts. <laughs> so, so true. This one comes from Lauren Hoff11, longtime supporter of Embrace, always on our TikTok lives, always showing support um, to Embrace on TikTok, Instagram, everywhere. Appreciate her so much. She loves the podcast. Uh, she was. Tuning in every episode last season. She says, I used to, this is a good, this is a really good one. So listen up. It says, I used to mentor in elementary school to younger kids than me with diabetes. I feel like most kids are pretty invincible and don't mind the attention with having diabetes. Good point. Kids growing up used to always love or enjoy getting out of class to take me to the clinic. Boom. I love that. And that's why I didn't address elementary school kids too much. Um, one, I, I don't think they're listening to the podcast like that. <laughs> and two, they really don't care. I worked with elementary school kids too, and they don't care, man. They will show you the, their Pokemon card collection out the gate. They'll show their crush their um, Yu-Gi-Oh card collection out the gate. They'll show their crush a scab that they have on their arm. They don't care, man. They'll they'll come up to you, pull your arm, and say, hey, look at this machine I got in my arm. Like, they really don't care, and that's so true. They feel invincible. Sometimes we got to Take it back and be like our childhood selves, man. Be invincible. That's so, so, so true. They don't mind the attention. And we all know when we were in elementary school, we loved to read any reason to get out of class and go where I remember love. I remember loving going to um, the health office to go test my blood sugar. Excuse me, because it gave me an excuse to leave class early and hit the lunch line early. Um, this one comes from uh, Tanner C underscore eighteen on Instagram. It says, embrace it. You don't know people in public, so who cares who sees you bullishing? That's so true. Um, if it's not in a high school setting, and even if it is, you might not ever see these people again. You might not, if you're, you're scared about taking your insulin or checking your blood sugar out of Wendy's, 99.9% .9 you'll never see that person again. So who cares? You know what I'm saying? Um, you are not doing the things that you need to do because of what someone might think that you might never you probably will never see again this is so true um this person uh buckle 1979 says when i realized no one was really paying attention to me checking my blood sugars or using my pump again so true like i said no one cares no one realizes no one pays attention like that they're worried about them they're worrying about they're worrying about what's everyone thinking of me at this moment all in the same boat so true and this last one comes from Trigger059 or Trigger059. Again, another longtime supporter on TikTok. Um, he's the reason we have, uh, we embraced um, operates how they do now. He sent us a laser printer a long time ago with like 1,500 labels. Um, and since then, we've been able to cut down shipping costs like practically in half. Um, so a huge shout out to him. Um, and he's always showing love, always showing support over on TikTok. And he says, never say, oh, that complication will never happen to me because it most likely will. Always ask for help. That's a, that's a little off topic, but very, very, very good point. Actually, not off topic because if you're not testing, if you're not dosing in public and you hold it off, you might be prolonging that high blood sugar for a couple of hours. And at the end of the day, I know it's scary to talk about, but that stuff catches up to you. Those complications of diabetes are very, very, very real. So that's why you need to take care of it now so you can avoid those things. Something I learned that helped me feel a lot better when I was younger is I had this misconception that 
um, all these scary things that you hear about. Oh, your leg's going to get cut off. You might lose your sight because of diabetes. I thought those things were happening no matter what. So I was terrified. But my doctor told me, dude, you might, you don't have to ever see any complication as long as you take care of it. So very true. Those complications will happen if you don't take it seriously right now. If you don't embrace it right now. So do it, man. The complications will come if, um, if you don't take care of it. So manage your diabetes the best way you can. Be on top of it. Test your blood sugar in public. Dose in public. Bolus in public. Who cares? You're not going to have those complications later in life because of Sally might be watching. You know what I'm saying? It's never that deep. Um, and then I wanted to go to, I wanted to read one more story. This one's, this is a good one. This, this comes, this, I can relate to this one, um, heavy. This one comes from, this one's also from Dana Buck, uh, Buckle 1979. She says, she has a funny story and I, I want to, I have a funny story to add to this. Um, but she says, funny story. When I was in high school, my friend and I were at a carnival type thing when I needed to check my blood sugar and give an insulin injection. We went to the restroom. I was at the counter. My friend standing next to me and saying loudly, are you shooting up? Um, I mean, giving yourself insulin. And when I realized no one was really paying attention to me, checking my blood sugar or taking care of my pump, it made it much easier to take care of my diabetes wherever I happened to be. So great, great, great advice. And you can see not, I'm, it's not just me saying this. It's, we heard this from a handful of people. Nobody really cares. Nobody's really looking like that. Nobody is really judging like that. Um, so do it. Who cares, man? Um, but yeah, and it's, it's, and we, I know we can all relate to that story. My mom always in public would be like, dude, Brandon, are you high? And everyone would be like, dude, this kid's like 12. She's asking if she's high. <laughs> and I know everyone can relate to that. We've all been in that situation and friends make things funnier, man. Fr friends again, make, uh, help <laughs> embrace diabetes. I'm a roaster. I like to roast anyone. You can ask my girlfriend. She she's probably annoyed by. It. I roast her on everything. I roast my friends on every. They can't slip up at all around me. They can't mess up a word around me. I, I'm a roaster. Um, so in turn, I got that back in high school heavy. So whenever I bring up my pump, my all my friends like in unison would be like, no, <laughs> like it's sad that I had to bring it out because I'd always do it like I don't know her, and they're like, no, um, you know, and then you get the android jokes and the 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 robot jokes, but it's all in good fun, especially if it's coming from people that you love. So, and it's fun to make fun of yourself. It's, it's, it, it helps, man. So that's all I have um, on that topic. Thank you guys so much for listening. I know I rambled on a lot, but I appreciate you guys um, listening in, tuning in every week. Um, I want to do a special shout out to our top donator of the week, Miss Eureka.Journey or Eureka's.Journey. She's on TikTok, man. She uh, has contributed and donated um, a lot to embrace over the past two weeks, whether it be support or monetary. Um, and I really wanted to shine a light on her and thank her and appreciate her. So go check her on, check her out on, on, um, TikTok and thank her. I appreciate you guys so much. And remember, please remember what we talked about today. Be confident with your diabetes. Try not to be embarrassed. Um, nobody cares. Remember keep that in your head. Nobody cares in the best way ever. I'm not saying nobody cares about you. But nobody cares, man. We're all dealing with our own stuff. Um, we're doing our best. We're trying to do our best with diabetes. So why add on a, another serving to that plate of, you know, not dosing in public or, or being worried about what people are thinking about? You know what I'm saying? Because people don't care, man. Be confident with it. Embrace it. And remember the challenges for this week. All right? Do something. Take a baby step in, in, in um, putting yourself out there. Okay? I promise you'll be all right. I promise you'll see good from it. And if anybody has anything negative to say about it, we're tough. We have diabetes. We brush these things off. We move on. And if anything, just send me their address and I will pull up. Me and the entire Embrace community, we're going to pull up. We'll do a little intimidation tactics, all right? You don't know my past. I could be a mobster. You never know. <laughs> Anyways, appreciate y'all. Have a wonderful week. Have a great week. Thank you so much. I will see you back here next Wednesday. Also, last update. I want to throw you some updates. I know, I know, I know. I was about to let you go. You're about to put on the next podcast, the next, next song. But listen, updates. We are now putting out new uh, videos on YouTube every single Monday. So be sure to check those out. A lot of behind the scenes stuff, a lot of stuff at the storage unit if you like that. Some unboxings, um, different from this video. So 
There's going to be a video on Monday and Wednesdays. Every single week, we're pumping out stuff for you guys. Um, so thank you. Make sure you like, subscribe, all that good stuff, comment. Um, and I would be so honored, so happy if you tell me that little baby step you took this week. I believe in you. Remember that. I believe in you. I'm proud of you. And I'm not just saying that I have diabetes as well. I've had it since I was seven, had it for 20 years. So in a way, I, I, I see myself, you know, when I was scared and embarrassed. So I, whatever you do, I'm proud of you. I see you. And, you know, I know that you can do it. I know you can be confident with it. I know you can embrace it. Um, and you got this, man. It's diabetes. We got this. We're figuring it out together. And I uh, appreciate you. Go go follow me on TikTok, E-M-B-R-A-C, number three, E-M-B-R-A-C, the number three on TikTok, Instagram, all that good stuff, man. Love y'all. But, uh, yeah, man, appreciate you guys. I'll see you back here next week. Boom. Thanks for listening to another great episode of the Embrace Podcast. You can follow Embrace on Instagram at Embrace3Movement or on TikTok at Embrace3. If you or someone you know has diabetes and needs supplies, you can visit their website at TheEmbraceFoundation.org and fill out a supplies request form. We'll see you back here every other Wednesday for a fresh new episode of the show. Until then, embrace, endure, and overcome diabetes. You are not alone.